Good morning, Freedom Friends. This is B from Life Done Free. You have asked me to show you how a wood cook stove works. So if you're interested in finding out how I work mine, come check it out. So today I am going to show you what all these doors are in my stove. Obviously this is the firebox. Right? Come on, scoot scoot. Scoot scoot. I know, you like to lay right in front. This is the ash drawer, right? Ash. And this ash pan has a, ooh, hot, 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 has a handle that sits right there. And then obviously, this one is the oven, right? To cook in. But what is this? Why is this panel even here? Well, let me show you. It has one long, L-shaped metal and two small, which on the door has one long and two short. So it just hangs on there and then it slides over to lock it in place. Typically I would do this when the stove is cold Actually, let me go and empty the ash pan first, and then I have something to dump it into. Get my handy dandy gloves out. set this on the floor. When you purchase one of these stoves, the two items that come with it are these two here. One is just a hook to maneuver around in the firebox. This one has a plow on it so you can scrape the coals around, scrape the ash around to allow it to drop into the box. Making sure the oven handle is off right here. So this is on, this is off. <clears throat> you unscrew these. And here is the creosote that collects in the oven box. Now, let me get a flashlight so you can see what that looks like. Flashlight. I've got this handy dandy light that Tag uses. 
comes in so handy when you live off grid and you don't have a lot of electricity. Although we have plenty of sun today. Plenty of, plenty of sun allows us to do all kinds of things. So let me show you, see if I can show you what this looks like in here. Can you see all of the, let me see if I can shorten this. Okay, now, can you see better what's inside there? All of that stuff. You use this tool and you scrape it out. I need to turn on the I need to turn on the air purifier. That is just going right back into the firebox. I need to. You put this back on. You want to keep that cleaned out so that that doesn't catch on fire. You know, creosote is a lot of the reason why chimney fires happen. Then you put your cap back on. Put your ash pan back in. make sure there's no ash in there and I use the same plow tool there you go that is done now on this stove you have these controls right here See when I push this on all the way to this side, there's a coil in here and you can see how that turns and it moves this chain up and down to allow this flap to open and close. So turning it all the way to the left opens the flap all the way up 
turning it all the way to the right, lowers the chain, lowers the flap, closes the air flow through the firebox. So I leave it open. Oh, this I should have had up. So this is the, and if you can see that square in there, when I open, let's see, when I open this flap, that opens that. Did you see it? And it closes as I open, closed. I usually leave it open about a half an inch to a full inch, depending upon how much airflow I want in there. So both of these allow airflow to come into the firebox. So does this. Opening this up allows air in through the ash, ash door and up through the firebox and out the chimney flue. So if you're starting a fire, you want everything open except the oven door because you don't want whatever is going on in here to go into the oven uh, clean out because that's how you get all that junk in there. So you open up the flue, open up, turn the uh, thermostat on high, open the ash drawer, start a fire. Then close the flue, close the ash door, and then you can adjust the temperature via, so closing that, you can adjust the temperature right here. High, low. And I do have, there's a panel that goes over this section um, that's nice and glossy and shiny like this, but I have it taken off because I want to see what this is doing. And you can see there's ash on it, but that is always hot. Don't touch it. Don't touch it when this is going. Then if you want the oven to gain in temperature, which a lot of times it does anyway, depending upon how, how hot the fire is. But if you want the oven to gain in temperature, this has to be open. So opening that allows the heat to circulate into the box more. This stove also comes with one of these to take these off, which I have never done. Um, back in the day when I was growing up, my parents had a wood stove and we would take that off and set a pan on top of there, but it would get black and gunky because the fire actually comes up through this hole. See, you can see the fire. You can also see ash. I do not open these. And water cannot go down in there because it is in this hole. So like if you have something that over, over bubbles, which um, I've had in the past just once because I learned a good lesson, um, that makes a really loud noise. Um, but if you look at the bottom of this, you can see how that is welded on there. That covering over the hole is totally covered. So water will not go down in there. Although, I mean, water can go down this circle right here and then down onto your firebox, down onto your fire, um, which again, makes a lot of noise. I don't use this. I have two of those round burners, but what I have noticed in cooking in this the hotter, the more left over the firebox, the hotter the surface. 
So if I wanna cook something on high, I'm gonna slide it over here, particularly in that corner, is hot, hot, hot. And then it goes medium and then low. So you can see the coffee's on here and it is not percolating, but the water is warm. So if I took that over to this side, you can hear the water kind of churning in there. Look, it's moving because the water is moving in there and it allows that to circulate that water in the pan. Now listen. Right? There's more movement in that water in there. Putting it over here. You see it rocking? That water's really moving inside that. But look, this water, nothing. No boiling, just kind of moving around. Look at this baby, rocking away. Now listen. Hotter kind of simmering at the bottom. But bring it over here. Not as much. Bring it over here. Absolutely nothing. So that's how I cook on the surface. Told you about the oven. Now these two doors up here are warmers or dehydrators does not get very hot i mean these knobs get hot because they're right above the cook surface but you can see let me see if i can set this up real quick that I cook the most off of because it fits up two bagels, you know, just enough for us. Fits in here and you can close it. So it's deep enough for my little pan here. Then obviously they can go in the oven or you could just set it up on top, but then the air touches this and it does not, um, it tends to dehydrate a little bit more sitting on top to where if it's in here, it's more of an oven type of thing, but it's a warming oven. Doesn't get very hot in there. Now this fan here, I don't know if you can see that very well. This fan, one of our boys got me for Christmas a couple of years ago, and it is just powered by the heat of the stove. And it is here, it is on. I try to push that heat from the stove through the kitchen and into that window into the living room. Or I can take it and turn it, which then pushes that heat across the kitchen and up into pod one level two because it is just pushing the air. Plus, this door, there's a lot more heat that comes from that door than comes from this side. But if I took this and put this up on the warmer, it will stop because the warmer is not hot enough to power that fan. Plus, you can hear it humming. The spinning of the fan vibrates the, um, the hood. 
and I don't like listening to that. Plus it will turn off. So I keep it down here on the cook surface, which will keep it running. And it just helps to circulate the heat in the room. Again, with no power, just the, the heat of the stove. Kitchen Queen. Got this stove from kitchenqueen.com. Um, it was just over $4,000 when we bought it. Um, oh, here's another thing we got with it. So inside, I don't know if you can see here. Inside the firebox, right? This is the firebox. You see that coil that's in there? It's a half circle. See that half circle in there? That will circulate water. So the cold water, so hot water, heat raise, rises to, this, to the top. So the cold water will come in through the bottom, it will get heated into the firebox, and then it will then evacuate through the top into the tank that's gonna be on the back. We do not have that tank yet. So this, we still have to put the, the tile on the wall, but you can see those holes that are in the back and those holes that are in the back are what will, the pipe will come through the stove. It will go through this wall and into the um, other, the back porch where we, will, where we will have the stainless steel, another stainless steel tank. So this stove has this tank on it, which allows me to get water, hot water, from this spigot. So there is a, it is a double tank, has 24 gallons of water in it. There is a reservoir here and a reservoir there, but they connect in the middle. So it just sits on the back of the stove on this like I don't know what you call that that's hot and it just wraps around the pipe the stove pipe that comes out of the stove and into the wall so this tank is a horseshoe around that stove pipe And then it just allows us to have 24 gallons of hot water at all times as long as the stove is going. Otherwise, the water's just cold sitting back there, which is just another storage tank. So there's how I get the water out on the side that the door is on. It also comes with one on this side, but um, we do not have it. We have it um, off because I don't want it on... I don't want it on the side of the, I don't want to have to try to squeeze between there when it's hot to get the water out. So I opted to have it just on the right hand side, which gives me plenty of room between, you know, the cabinet and the stove. So I also have on here a temperature control tells me how hot the stove is, well, how hot the pipe is. I actually have two on there, but I only use this one here. Um, and you want it, optimal temperature is in the white and not in the black. So between 250 degrees and 475 degrees would be optimal temperature to burn off any creosote that would be in the pipe so that you don't have a chimney fire. Um, I have this bucket here of wood is what I take out and fill and then bring back in for the um, wood. So that lasts a night. That way I don't have to go outside in between, you know, going to bed and waking up. Mm, that's about it. The Kitchen Queen Grand Comfort 750. This also comes in a smaller 
Um, I think 550, and I think there's even one smaller than that. Uh, this is the biggest one. I needed it to, to heat the most space and um, biggest oven box and all the options. So like the tank on the back is is uh, add-on and the coil inside is an add-on. And I think the warmer box is also an add-on. You can get this stove without those options to decrease the cost of the stove. I also have these um, towel bars. They're called towel bars, but I would never hang a towel on there. Um, that gets hot. Oh, this lever here. So when it's pushed in, it closes off the air circulation at the top of the firebox. So when you open this, it's called a window wash. So the oxygen, let me see if I can show it to you. See those holes right there? Ah! See those holes right there? That closes off those holes or it opens up those holes. So when the door gets dirty or sooty and you're burning a hot fire, you can open this window wash and it allows circulation, it allows air to go in there to circulate the, the heat and it will clean that glass. Um, it'll burn off any soot that is sitting on that glass. That is how I keep the fire um, door clean so that I can really see what's going on in there. And then when you're not in use, when you're not in the room and you like leave to go shopping or whatever, you want to lower the flue, you want to close the window wash, and you want to make sure that the doors, both of these doors are shut. So no, see how like this, I just, I threw a log in there and pieces of coal fly out, you know, cause I just throw it in there, threw, I just threw it in there and out popped a, just a piece of, of coal. Now that's not um, on fire, but the tile, and then keeping any debris off of here because if you have a bunch of little wood particles and something like that flies out, you can then catch those little wood particles on fire and then you have a fire on your kitchen floor. So um, growing up in front of our fireplace, not fireplace, but in front of our wood stove, we had burn marks all over because we had carpet, like old time, very small napped carpet. And then there was a nice big burn and then there was lots of little um, charred marks because, well, you can't stop that kind of stuff from flying out when you're feeding the fire. So um, I recommend if you're gonna have any kind of wood burner, any kind of, of fireplace, any kind, any fire that's inside, I would recommend some kind of fire resistant flooring in front of it so that um, you don't burn, you don't burn your flooring. Um, and then you just be really careful. But, you know, accidents happen and um, I don't want to burn the place down. So try to do what we can to be self-sufficient, right? to be free, to be um, our own everything. So there you have it. Grand Comfort Kitchen Queen 750 um, in use. All, all winter long, it uh, doesn't really get, it doesn't really get a break because this is how we cook. This is how we um, eat. This is how we heat our house and um, this is how we do it ourselves. Be out. Hey, one thing that I forgot to mention was when you're trying to clean this, you don't clean it when it's hot. You have to wait until it's cooled in order to like scrub the surface or even, you know, we had a bunch of people over for the holidays and somebody spilled something on top of the burner and then it leaked down, of course, onto the front of the uh, oven door. And 
than around the oven door and you have to clean this when it's cool. Otherwise, when you take a hot rag and you touch it, the rag actually dries before you can clean it. Or when you're trying to clean the top surface, it will burn your rag if you're trying to do it when it's hot. So I wait until well, every morning when I get up, the fire is typically um, burnt down a little bit. So it'll be just kind of coals in there and sometimes it's just out all the way and if that's the case that is optimal time for cleaning i take a green scrubber and i scrub the top of this but i only go in a, a side to side manner i never go up and down on the surface because you can see um, every scratch that you put on here now when i first got this it was bright and shiny and silver but the more I cook on it, the more patina it gets, the more um, blues and grays that the surface becomes. I never cook directly on the top. Somebody actually asked me that if I just could crack an egg and cook it right there. I mean, you could, but that would make a giant mess. So I have pots and pans that I use. Um, so I only clean this uh, left to right, never up and down. And then when the person spilt the food onto the surface and then it ran down the door and ran down the, uh, the stair area here, I had to wait until it was cooled. I actually waited until a morning. I left it on there for uh, several days until a morning that I woke up and the fire was like out. The fan was off. The fire with the box was cold. The stop, the top was cold. And then I got my um, green scrubber and very lightly because I don't want to ruin the surface of the enamel. So I very lightly scrubbed whatever was burnt on off and then wiped it down with a washcloth and then dried it with a towel. Um, you can see on, in here, I actually had put a uh, cast iron skillet that I had put, um, it had oil on it. And so when I put it in here, it left like a ring, it left a ring of like grease. You see that circle that I just have not scrubbed off. Like I've wiped it, but because it's grease, like gummy grease, right? Because those cast iron pans, they have grease on the inside and the outside so that it doesn't rust. Well, when I set that cast iron pan up there, in the warmer, the oil from the outside of the pan went onto the surface of the, of the um, warmer. And so that is still there um, and I just haven't scrubbed it. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of scrubbing the stove because I, again, I don't want to ruin the surface of it. Um, I would rather have a grease ring than a big rust ring where I scrubbed it and scratched the hell out of it, heck out of it, where I scrubbed it and scratched the heck out of it. Um, so cleaning it, you have to do it when it's cold and I'm trying to think if I missed anything. Um, that's about it. So cleaning it side to side, never up and down. Oh, here you can see like, I mean, there's ash on it because, oh, there's even a hair on there and it did not burn the hair. There's ash on it because every time you open this door, like puff of ash comes out, which is why we have an air purifier in this room to um, combat that. But so here's like a spot right here that has been like cooked on and something has come out, but that's hot, I would not wash that right now. Um, you can see this burner is not, is not um, it's kind of cocked to the side because I need to like put it back left and right. So you can see that the scratches on this burner are at a diagonal. Technically, I would keep it, oh, turn it sideways hard to do with one hand so I'll just do that afterwards but I will take that burner and I will shift it so that the hole 
is so that the hole is on at the nine o'clock, which will um, make those scratch marks this way so that you can't see a difference in the surface. I don't know if that makes sense, but, uh, oh, um, I think too, when I bought this, the glass doors were an upgrade. So you don't have to have the glass doors, which would also save some money in the long run. run. So, that's about it, folks. I, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I will get back to you. Be out.